Alrighty, welcome to a three-on-three -three draft. Three-on-three is scrappier, grittier, and you end up with slightly more fair decks, though. If you look at this Black Lotus, that might not be the case this time. I am drafting with Timrod, one of the founders of this very server, awesome guy, and Mac the Knife, Mac my boy, battling against Adram, Jesse, and Theo. Some strong opposition. Oh, what do we got here? Obviously, I'm taking Lotus. I am passing to Theo, and Jesse's passing to me. Last couple times I've drafted Jesse, she's, she's drafted unfair decks. But those have been eight player drafts, six player drafts. It's a little harder to do that, though not impossible. I expect Theo to take Dothy Voidwalker, Reprieve, or Skydiver. Maybe Time Twister if he's into it. Again, in a six player draft, it's less likely, but still, Time Twister is a powerful card. My guess is Reprieve, but it's going to heavily depend on what his first pick was. If he first picked Thoughtseize, he'll just take Voidwalker. I do think there's a chance I get Time Twister back. But not a very big one, so I'm not going to count on it by any stretch. I will just take my Lotus and move on. This next pick, unsurprisingly, is a lot less exciting. So what do you do when you first pick Lotus? Well, you pump the fist. It's just a great card. Second, you look for high-impact plays, which kind of used to be Oracle, but I kind of don't feel that way anymore. Uh, so like Minsk and Boo, you want Lelia. You just want any, you know, decent Adeline thing to drop into play, or you want to try to draft like a combo deck that replays Lotus with like Underworld Breach or Yawgmoss Will. Of course, putting it into any deck is still pretty good. What do I take here though? The best card in the pack, honestly, is probably Kolagon's Command. There is a second Eldrazi, because Kozilek in the last pack. It's worth considering. I might just take the K Command. It's actually not the best in the Lotus deck. Lotus doesn't cast K Command all that well, but I don't think, I don't really want to take Taiga. I mean, I could take Flicker Wisp. Maybe that's just the pick. White Weenie with Lotus is awesome. And uh, I haven't been picking up too many dubs recently. I feel like I've been getting beaten down, so maybe I should be the one beating down. All right, well, let's just take the Flick Risp and see what's up. It's tough. If I take K Command, I would have definitely taken Inti. I still might, honestly. Inti is a really messed up card. There's also Duress, Force of Negation, and Spell Pierce. But when it doesn't... I mean, I could go that direction. And then there's Retrofitter, which obviously I do love that in general. Mmm... Kind of feel like I should just take Inti and see whether Hero or Containment Pleased wheels, because I think Duress, Force, Retrofitter, and Spell Pierce are very likely to get taken, and then maybe Duretti, maybe Hero, maybe Witness, who knows. I just think Inti is a great card, and being assertive is a good way to really take advantage of the Lotus. Uh, this pack is pretty weak. The best card in the pack is like Fatal Push. There's also... I mean, if you have the deck for it, Seagate, same with Corpse Dance. I could take Student of Warfare here. Definitely not going to take, like, Tendrils. I might take Arc Trail. I don't, I'm not committed to white at all, and Arc Trail is a pretty good card. I think it's close to Fatal Push. It just depends on what you're playing against. All right, I'll, I'll take Arc Trail for now. I also passed a couple good black cards, so maybe I settle into black red at some point, though I guess I could have just taken Fatal Push. I don't know. Just take our trail and kind of see what develops. I don't really have a good sense of where I want to be yet. Okay, this pack has Exhum and World Spine Worm, but I think I'm just going to take Lauren of the Third Path. I think Lauren's pretty good. I don't think Burst Lightning is so good that I'm supposed to take it over Lauren. Though I guess I could also take Namestick or Goblin. This card is pretty, pretty exciting. Three mana, two, two, and when it enters the battlefield, you basically roll a die, and one through six, you get four red, seven through 14, you get five red, and 15 through 20, you get six red. <laughs> one thing that's funny about it is if it, it checks if it's on the battlefield. So if you play this and they kill it in response, you actually don't get the mana. Mm. But I do like Lauren in general. I'm just going to take Lauren here. I kind of feel like there's no one in this pod who's... That predisposed to draft white, Timrod is the closest. Not that any of these players are, you know, wouldn't draft it if it seemed like the, the, the deck to draft. I think I could get some leverage here by drafting white red, especially since that's not a deck I draft all that often. But, well, we'll see what the next pack is. I didn't take the best card in the pack when I took Flicker Risk because I think K Command's better. But I did take the best card in the pack with Inti. Inti, I think, is better than Duress. Duress is probably the next best card there. And Arc Trail and Loran, I mean, we're at a point where, like, Exhum is maybe the best overall card in the pack. But I don't know. Mm. Here we've got a Braid, Pirate Spellbomb, Adanto Vanguard. Chromeho Seed Shark's pretty good. Doomsday with Lotus, but we're, we're very far from that. I might just take a Braid. I think Vanguard has a good chance of wheeling. 
even in this pack. And I feel like I should be biasing a little bit towards red. Okay, so this pack, the Reprieve is un unsurprisingly gone. There's a Celestial Colonnade. Jan Janssen Chaos Crafter. Huh? Time Twister is gone, of course. Sylvan Library is still there, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> Renegade Rally could get Lotus back, but it's not even that great. I could just take Celestial Colonnade here. It's just a good card. It could help me splash. I could also take like Infernal Grasp and go into Black Red, not worry about these white cards. I kind of feel like I'm better off just taking Infernal Grasp here and then seeing what wheels this pack. Didn't have anything super exciting. This is the pack I took uh, Flicker Wisp out of over like K Command. I might just take Lion Sash here. I do think Lion Sash is good. All right. This is a bit of a mess. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we'll see where this ends up. But uh, I just feel like there hasn't been anything really powerful besides, like, I guess getting past this Inti that really makes me feel like, all right, I'm in the right direction. This pack, what comes back out of this pack? Cause remember, there's a Containment Piece, Priest, and a Hero of Bladehold. Okay, Hero of Bladehold's still there. It's a go. Someone took a Containment Priest, but that's also because that's just a good a good card in a lot of decks. Hero Blade Hold is white aggro. I'm slamming Hero. That's what I want to Lotus out. Passing up on a Duretti and a Grim Lava Mancer. As good as those cards are, I feel pretty good about that. And even if nothing else wheels, this was then a solid pack, though of course I've got to prioritize Red White. Student of Warfare came back. Okay. Taking that over Dovin's Veto. Yeah, Terra Sunder. And now... I could just be mono white. I mean, I have this Inti that I pretty much do want to play. I have Arc Trail and a Braid. Obviously, I could play those. But I basically got, with the exception of Flicker Wisp, all the white cards kind of for free. I just took other colored cards over them and they all came back. So I think I'm in the right position. I'll take Name Sticker Goblin here. I could take Bazaar in case Theo's going Reanimator. I guess I have two Intis, but that's just a. Yeah, an artifact of, not an artifact in the magic sense, <laughs> uh, a leftover Inti, a phantom Inti. Anyway, uh, this doesn't even look like a great name sticker goblin deck, but it's actually, I think, one of the better cards in the pack anyway, so let's just take it. Who knows? Maybe I'll get a Mana Morphos. Name sticker goblin, add four red, Mana Morphos, Hero of Bladehold. Ooh, what a combo. All right, Danto Vanguard for free. you love to see that. I'll pass a Concealed Courtyard. So right now I've got six white cards and four red cards. My best card, besides the Lotus, obviously, which doesn't really count, is Inti. I think Inti is better than all those white cards. But I think the fact that no one else is taking white cards means that I should be going into pack two with an eye towards just playing white. I don't really want to play against Arasta, but I think Theo's a little more likely to put Graveyard Trespasser in his deck. I guess I have Loran to kind of clown the Arasta. All right, I'll pass you a last pick Cabal Ritual. I think that is acceptable. Oh, last pick Grim Lava Mancer. All right, it's good to know, good to know. Guess we're playing blue. All right, well, I'll take Ancestral Recall here. I'm not going to pass it. I'd get Adeline back anyway, probably. I mean, not never a guarantee, but I'll take the Ancestral and maybe I'll be blue white. Maybe that Colonnade could have been the pick. We'll see, we'll see. I, I'm going to use Inti to represent my red cards for now, but I'm taking Ancestral. I expect Jesse to take Time Spiral. Seems like her jam. Maybe Dak. Though passing a last pick Grim Lava Mancer makes me feel like you're not playing red. So Time Spiral is going to go. Wooded Foothills, obviously that could be a pick too. It's going to go. Dak's going to go. Questing Beast probably going to go. Yeah, I have a good shot of Wheeling Adeline based on how pack one went. All right. Now I'm slamming Solitude, and if Othari comes back or Sacred Foundry comes back, I'll consider those. Most likely it's just going to be Intrepid Adversary. And now that I've picked up this Ancestral, I'm not that interested in playing the red cards anyway. But yeah, Solitude's amazing, so I'm going to take Solitude. A late Solitude is the kind of thing that could make someone switch into white. Okay, so here's another big pick. There's some good green cards, which maybe Jesse's playing green. We didn't see a lot of that game, or pack one. There's a couple red cards, but I don't know about my red status. There's Windswept Teeth, which is, I think, what I'm going to take. Then there's Scholar of New Horizons, which I do like. Two mana, two, two, that you can go search up a Plains or Mentor. This isn't even a good Mentor deck. All right, let's bin the Inti for now. Let's take the Windswept Teeth, because that just keeps my options open. 
and we'll see where we go. Palace Jailer, yes, thank you very much. Maybe we'll get lost. Passing a late natural order in a frantic search, those cards are both good, but Palace Jailer is where it's at. All right, well, I feel very good about this lane. Also about opening Lotus Ancestral, because <laughs> what a pair. But, you know, we got a ways to go here, but I feel like we've got really good outs. And all these red cards I took, for the most part, didn't even really cost me much. The biggest one is I took, I think, a Braid or Namesticker Goblin. I don't remember which one. No, a Braid. I think over uh, the Celestial Colonnade. And I would much rather have Celestial Colonnade here. But... I mean, given A, what I've opened, two great pieces of power, two of the top four cards in the cube or something like that, and B, the fact that uh, white seems so open. Oh, now I slam Arid Mesa, because I don't really care which of Cathar Commando and Virtue I get, and five, six, yeah, I, it's going to be hard to imagine not getting one of them. All right, one more new pick. Also, I might be able to play three colors now, because if I get the du the correct duels, like Arid Mesa's already red-white. If I get a... Let's see, what would be the ideal land? If I get a Tundra and then maybe wheel that Sacred Foundry somehow, I could end up basically playing Red White Splash Ancestral, but we'll see where this goes. And the first miss, unfortunately, for me. I mean, I could take Inferno Titan. I, I don't think Jesse's that likely to play that. I kind of want to just take the Tireless Tracker. But I guess that's also passing an Uro and an Ooze and a bunch of good cards. I, I mean, I'll just take the red card. I feel like there's like a non-zero chance I'd want to play it with Lotus. And, oh, and Name Sticker Goblin in my deck. Yeah, that's it. That's the combo. It doesn't really make sense, I don't think, to hate Tireless Tracker when there's a, a decent green card, though worse than Tracker, but then also two good green black and a good green blue card. Like most green decks will just have an option there. There's also a sinkhole there. It didn't get see. I guess we saw some pretty late black picks that would make it more likely Jesse's not playing black. All right, well, there's Adeline. Got to slam Adeline. Adeline's great. I don't want to run, run the risk of not having it wheel. Questing Beast didn't get taken, but all, for the most part, the rest did. Okay, Othari got taken. Now there's Sacred Foundry and Intrepid Adversary, and I feel like Sacred Foundry is the pick. I First of all, I could get Eagles in the North or Adversary back. I mean, someone just needs to... Someone's going to take Bobble and probably Tamiyo. Siphoner and Dromoko's Commander and Zernorb are a little narrow, but... I have a chance of getting one of these two cards back. And Sacred Foundry, at that point, I have three red-white lands. That basically unlocks a Braid, Arc Trail, and Inti, with further options on maybe Name Sticker Goblin, uh, Inferno Titan, and Grim Lava Mancer. And here I'm going to take Scholar of New Horizons, because it can go get Sacred Foundry. So Scholar is a fixer, and if I get a blue-white land, becomes a double fixer. Passing a late Court of Garenbrig and Elder Gargroth. There's two green cards anyway. Also, there's enough cards left. I could get a last pick Mentor, Hellrider, or Lava Dart. I wouldn't be shocked to see those. Lava Dart's sick. Discard Lava Dart to Inti and you can still flash it back. That's some amazing value. This deck's looking awesome, by the way. <laughs> I think this deck's looking very, very good. So right now, obviously I'd still need playables, though I do have some red cards in my sideboard I can dredge up if I need to. And I think pack three is going to be set up to be awesome. Plus, I probably get another card or two out of this pack. I wouldn't be surprised if that uh, that happened. Othari got taken, but I don't really care about that. I actually would rather have the Sacred Foundry. It's kind of nice. I don't even have the option to make the wrong pick. <laughs> and uh, we get, yep, the Get Lost came back. Sort of Rampaging Raptor, but I'd rather just take the removal spell. I'm also kind of heavy on creatures. And it, it's even, it's been so easy too, because even if I was like, well, maybe I hate a blue-black card. Well, there's two blue-black cards in the pack, so it wouldn't even help. Okay, Virtue came back. Someone took Cathar Commando, which makes sense. Not taking Ren and Six. I could take Mana Tithe here. The Virtue of Loyalty is a pretty strong card. Hmm. Do I want Mana Tithe or Virtue? I'm just going to take the Virtue, I think. And here, I guess I'll hate the Uro. Shatter Skull Smashing came back? Sure, that's just free real estate right there. All right, passing Thran Spider and Valakut Exploration. And then sadly, I didn't get the last pick uh, card, Eagles or Intrepid Adversary. I'm just deciding if I want Dromoka's Command here. I think I'll take the Zernor. I'm not going to play Dromoka's Command, I don't think. Oh, I got the last pick, Lava Dart. It's a great sideboard card at the very least. No power? What is this? No. <laughs> uh, here, I kind of just want to take Lightning Bolt. I don't love passing Pest Infestation, but I don't think Theo's playing green because pack two, a lot of green got passed. 
So that is actually good news. And then there's three fetches, plus I'll get some number of dorks back. I mean, Lelia probably doesn't come back. Kind of assume at least two of the fetches are gone. Pest infestation's gone. Maybe Trop is gone. Yeah, I might even get a fetch out of this pack. I might double wheel out of this pack, actually. Yeah, I, I'm going to double wheel some dorky red thing. I think I just take the removal spell. That's got to be the best. Ugh. This pack's actual bad news because there's like a million powerful cards that I cannot play. What do I do here? I maybe just hate the mind twist and pass Theo a counter spell and a tinker. Because I'm not going to, there's no card in here that I would play. I don't think there's a single card I would even add to my deck, regardless of whether I should hate draft or not. I don't smell like I think Mind Twist is great, but there's three good blue cards. It doesn't really make sense to take one of those. I'll just take the Mind Twist. It's fine. Mm, this pack's also pretty bad, so, this, so we're getting a little worked here. Sp like, Spellbook Vendor is a card I would put in my deck. I actually think this card's pretty good. And Sunbaked Canyon's not bad, but I really don't like that neither of those cards are going to get taken. So the question is, do I hate one of these cards? I, I don't really feel that's great because there's like multiple different good reanimator cards. I guess I could just take Underground C, but then if Theo's not blue-black, I'm just hating off Mac maybe. I'm just going to take the Sunbaked Canyon. It's not. It's disappointing, but, you know, it's, it's, it's all right. All right, there's Snapcaster Mage for Ancestral and Lightning Bolt. A blue-white land is really what I want. Oh, there's an Animate Dead in the pack? I mean, this is a good Snapcaster deck, but unfortunately we're not looking like we're going to get a blue fetch out of these, which means I just play maybe a couple islands. You know what? I'm going to hate the Animate Dead. I, I don't I don't really need any of these cards. I'll, I think there's a good chance I get figure back anyway. It's looking... The way I'm drafting this, I actually kind of like. You know, got to pat myself on the back. I've taken almost all the good white cards on the wheel, which makes it also a little harder for my opponents to tell that I'm drafting white. Like, I passed Theo this pack, and... It, I don't think the first thing he thinks is like, oh, he must be drafting white. Okay, this pack has some action. There's Chandra, there's Gemstone Caverns, there's Cauldron Complete and Batter Skull to go with the Stoneforge in the last pack. I might just take Ancient Tomb. I've got some good Tomb cards. Uh, Hero, Palace Jailer, Loran, Solitude are all pretty good with Ancient Tomb. If I play the Name Sticker Goblin Inferno Titan, it's pretty good with Ancient Tomb. I could also take Chandra because Chandra's a pretty good card to Lotus out. And I, I'm feeling like with four red-white lands, I could just play double red cards. Oh, and that also makes my uh, name sticker goblin actually a card. Because we're we're going to need to play some of these red cards. But if I put, put Chandra in my deck, I could play Titan. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the Chandra, I think, at that point. And then here, Bonehorde Dracosaur is kind of a beater. If the, you untap with this thing, it's great. That's a late LED to go with that Echo. Oh, no blue-white land. Yeah, that's a beating. Oh, well. Um, I might just oust. Oust is a great card. I, I would be happy to play oust. I don't really need the Dracosaur, I feel like. I feel like oust is going to be fine. None of the fetches came back. Stoneforge did. I think I can grab the Stoneforge here and get one of these idiots back. Oh, the portal's still in the pack, but I don't know if Theo took the portal or not, so I kind of feel like I should just grab Stoneforge. Maybe I just hate the counterspell here. I don't really need Mind Collapse. I have tons of removal. All right, let's just do that. Mm, yeah, bad packs are still bad. Oh, so did someone take the Spellbook Vendor? <laughs> sure. Uh, not that I really need it here. I guess I take Grave Titan, or I could take Silent Clearing, but I'm not going to play that card. I don't know. Savannah is free, but I don't really have a reason to. I think I'm going to take Armageddon. There's definitely matchups where I'd be really happy to have this card. And I'm not taking Zerta. I'm passing Zerta Monolith. So pack three was pretty bad for me. Just the packs broke in such a way that we're bad, but I think my deck's still great. And, you know, pack pack three being bad isn't the end of the world. The question now is, do I play this Ancestral Recall? I'm not honestly sure. I mean, I'm going to main deck the Lion Sash, I think, which, ooh, is a Stoneforge Mystic target, too. Uh, okay, they both came back, which means I get to grab Cauldra Complete. That's nice. The Name Sticker Goblin's actually looking kind of nice here. I need to cut a couple cards. Not that many, though, because Shatter Skull Smashing is also kind of a land. I'd probably cut the Ancestral. Maybe I'll slide it in if if I play a matchup where I think it's good. But one blue-white land, I would have slammed it. Because I would have had that would have gotten me four sources. Because if it was like a Tundra that I could search for with these two fetches plus Scholar. But, yeah, we didn't get there. That's all right. 
All right, Tribal Flames came back, and there's two green cards. I think I'll just take Tribal Flames. I do a lot of hate drafting in these, especially in the six-player drafts, but I think that that's the way you're supposed to do it. Oh, I could take Grim Monolith. This is actually not the worst Grim Monolith deck. I don't really need the Blade Splicer. I'm already cutting cards, and I think Monolith actually looks like it could be decent. Plus, it's the best card to hate. I don't think I'm worried about Emery. Yeah, it feels like someone moved into white late, but it didn't really bother me. I got a late Palace Jailer still. I got pretty much hooked up. All right, pretty sad not to put Ancestral Recall in my deck, but I think that's right. Let's get to deck building. All right, so this is red-white with currently 16 land plus Lotus. I do want to play another land, I think, this deck, especially with like Sunbaked Canyon and Shatter Skull Smashing as kind of dual like land slash spells. So I need to cut a card. I don't want to cut Lion Sash, even though that's one of my weaker cards, because I have Stoneforge, and I think there's a decent chance they've got reanimators on their team. Let's see. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten white. And I'm going to play one more land, but I want to check this out. So this is five red, six red, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so I can just put another white in. Then I'll have 11 white sources plus Lotus and 10 red sources. I mean, my man is great. Not good enough that I think it's worth playing an island for Ancestral. Well, it's also Armageddon. If I'm the only aggressive deck, maybe I do just Geddon. This deck can make some big plays. With Grim Monolith, uh, Namesticker Goblin, Lotus, like I feel like I can, can do some things. Mm. What do I want to cut here is the question. I could cut one of my removal spells. Maybe I cut Arc Trail because I have Oust, Abrade, Lightning Bolt, and Get Lost, and I think those are all better. And then maybe I don't start the Armageddon. This deck feels like it goes pretty well into the late game already. All right, I think this is where I'm going to be. Let's take a look at what my teammates have because if they're if they're both aggro or both they're not, neither of them are green, that sort of thing, it could change a little bit. All right, my teammates. Tim has got a pretty nice Flash Worm deck, which means Theo, we talked about it. Theo took Tinker and Portal and has Force of Will. I'm glad I hated that counterspell, at least. Flash Worm here with uh, Questing Beast, Natural Order for Crater Hoof or World Spine, Oko, True Name, Jite, a bunch of one-drops, and then Day's Mana Leak, Spell Pierce. Yeah, Feywild Caretaker, plus really good lands. I like it, Tim. Max got a little bit more of a mix. That Animate Dead I hated might have been bad, but... You know, that is just is what it is. He's got the Bazaar, Duress, Entomb, Exhum, uh, Corpse Dance, Recurring Nightmare, a bunch of Eldrazi, Gristlebrand, Fable. Some good stuff. We're battling Jesse round one. I'm on the play. All right, I mean, I'll, I'll keep this hand. I, I don't love it. It's a lot of lands, but Stoneforge for Cauldra on the play with a Sunbaked Canyon I could sacrifice. And if I uh, get my Stoneforge killed, maybe I can... Name sticker goblin out that cauldra. That could be sweet. So Jesse did end up playing green. That's what it looks like. Not land? Not land, please. Ooh, lightning bolt I like. And I'm also really glad I didn't draw a cauldra complete. I guess that would be the literal worst card I could draw. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I thought I only had one equipment. It's going to make this game a little bit harder. <laughs> Sorry, team. <laughs> It's going to be so funny. Oh, it actually works out so much better because I can just cast a light sash. <laughs> uh, truly, truly incredible. Just playing on another level here. Let's go Arid Mesa, Lion Sash, past the turn here. I mean, I could play Name Sticker Goblin next turn if I had the Cauldron complete, but I actually don't think I should play it. I should have played it till a few turns later. Mox Emerald, okay. Let's see what you got. Lelia? Oh, that's not too bad. I left up Arid Mesa so I could get, I think, just a mountain here. I don't really need to take damage. Let's just bolt this Lelia. And planes and draw, not land. Uh, I mean, sure. Um, let's go land and attack and lion sash the Lelia and I'm just gonna lion sash the prismatic vista and take some damage I guess maybe a sacred foundry would have been nice there with the lion sash I suppose that is true ranger capitan of eos okay what are we getting ragavan 
Mm, and we get to dash it? I don't love that because I have a Shatter Skull smashing, but all right. Don't give me Raghavan. Don't give me too bad. What do we get? We exile the mountain. Okay, that works. Action. Well, now I've got to play Name Sticker Goblin, I think. Because I'm going to sack the Sunbaked Canyon. A powerful play if you've ever seen it. All right. Sunbaked Canyon. Sacrifice. Into action? Mm -hmm. Ooh, are we going to sack Ranger Captain? Please sack Ranger Captain. <laughs> that would be awesome. Don't think that's very likely to happen. Oh, Palace Jailer. Okay. That is going to be good next turn. What do I do here? I could Shatter Skull Smashing the Captain. I kind of like that. I think that I'm not getting any... I'm not getting much better here. I'm going to sack the Captain. I don't have any spells to play, sure. I'm going to hit with the Lion Sash. And you got to have a removal spell to, to get Raghavan past the Name Sticker Goblin. And then next turn I can Palace Jailer here. It's kind of the plan. Also, it's not like I just lose if Raghavan gets dashed here, though. Of course, I don't want that to happen. Roberto? Into Sika's Chariot. Okay. Let's see what Robert hits. A Braid. Well, that's not one I want to get me to get I don't want to get 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 got by that so hopefully okay didn't play the Raghavan oh man one mana short of really having a good turn but I think Palace Jailer uh oh <laughs> Nachito borrowed some cards um Palace Jailer kill a cat token so then even if the Jailer goes away it's not a big deal and then Lion Sash is pretty big I do need to decide if I want to trade Lion Sash for the Asika's Chariot when it attacks I'm not going to attack so I, I want to keep the Monarch around all right well Grim Monolith isn't great but at least makes Cauldra complete or Inferno Titan well I guess I could even cast Inferno Titan already into something oh what is this Flame Tongue Kavu okay don't love that Let's get your rubber, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Okay, it's going to be a nice little mid-range battle here. So now you can crew the chariot and attack with the cat and the chariot. Wow, Flame Tongue was a perfect card here. Uh, I'm pretty much just dead now. That's cool. I guess I'll let this hit because I don't really have much of a choice. And then Raghavan's coming down. Oh, Smuggler's Copter. Interesting. And planes. All right. Yeah, that's going to be enough. Unfortunate. We'll see if game two goes better. All right. Sideboarding here. Um, Arc Trail definitely looks good. Lava Dart, Grim Lava Mancer. I kind of want all those kinds of cards. I definitely don't want Armageddon. I'm glad I didn't main deck that. Loran still seems good. I think I'm going to take out Grim Monolith. I just That's just kind of not the, the type of game we're playing. I think Name Striker Goblin is still good. Same with Inferno Titan, all that stuff. Lion Sash seems a little mid, honestly. Maybe Student of Warfare is... Because also... I'm kind of wondering if now is the time. If I take out two planes in a mountain and I put in the Ancestral... In this kind of game where you're not getting the game over with quickly, I think it's actually pretty good to board in something like Ancestral. I wonder if that means I shouldn't bring in Lava Dart. The only card I interacted well with was Raghavan. Grim, I think, is still pretty good. I like Scholar. I like Stoneforge, Loran. Oh, I guess I could actually take a Danto Vanguard out. All right. I kind of like this. This this seems like a, a nice way to go about things. Let's see if this works out. And they're just going to think I've Dick the Ancestral. All right. I am on the play. And... I'm going to keep this hand. I, I don't love it. I really don't. But... I think having blue mana, if I didn't have blue, I would not have kept. Now if I draw Ancestral, I've got that, and I've got two removal spells. Arc Trail is also pretty good at me sometimes picking up a two-for-one, and Shatter Skull Smashing is as well. Though, obviously that'll really heavily depend on kind of what the curve looks like. 
Usher of the Fallen. Well, that's that's something Arc Trail can get. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's let's not draw more lands, please. I didn't keep a five land hand because I wanted to draw more lands. I don't think there's a reason to play the blue. When you play an island in a Boros deck, your opponents are just going to think you have Time Walker Ancestral. In this case, they'd, they'd be correct. <laughs> I don't. I would rather not show them that information if I don't have to. So I'm obviously hoping to draw Ancestral. I'm hoping this isn't a Rogavon. I, I kind of want this just to be... I don't like this. I don't like this at all. All right, you can attack me. I mean, I guess if you're just going to pump Usher, then I'll just kill both things. Or boast Usher, I'll just kill the token and the Usher with Arc Trail on my turn. I kind of wanted to take two to hope that Jesse would either play something else that dies to it. Oh, <laughs> Monastery Mentor. No plays, please. No. <laughs> this is going to be sick. And I'm drawing Ancestral now. Um... Boom. That that is that's pretty lucky. If that works, then okay. Well, we're we're back into it. And we drew a removal spell, though, kind of a bad one. Get lost is good near the end of the game. Too early and it gives them the opportunity to uh Oh, no land. Alright. Let me get Let's just play the Lion Sash. And pass here and see what's going on. And maybe I can pick up a nice two for one off the Shatter Skull Smashing. Because next turn I can deal three. So I would it would again have to be a one toughness creature. But that seems like a thing that could happen. Flame Tongue Kavu is like one of the better cards in this matchup. Here I'm going to go end of turn, eat both your creatures, make Lion Sash into a 3-3. Three, three. Oh no. When your opponent misses a land drop and then draws a land, it's just so demoralizing. All right, I'll take it. I assume this isn't getting pumped. If you've got no lands in hand, I'd be surprised if that was the play, but it possibly could be. All right. I just thought that would be kind of weird. No plays after that, though. Okay. That is also kind of weird. Are you going to kill my Lion Sash now? Stomp it. Uh, all right, sure. At some point that was going to happen. I couldn't really prevent that. Okay, and I'll go get my planes. Draw Ancestral. Mm, come on. I think I'm just going to play a land and say go. It just doesn't really behoove me to, to cast anything, I don't think. Okay, I'm going to get whacked for f probably just two here, honestly. Then may, at the very least a Bone Crusher is coming out, which unfortunately I'm one mana short of killing both here. Oh, Smuggler's Copter. Okay. That I don't mind so much. Namesticker Goblin is kind of interesting. Okay, I think I'm just going to pass again. I'm going to get lost the Smuggler's Copter, and then I'm going to go Namesticker Goblin Shatter Skull Smashing to kill Figure of Destiny and Bone Crusher. Ooh. Okay, don't Look at Shatter Skull Smashing, please, or get lost. Island. All right, that plays. Bone Crusher is in. Copter is crude. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and get lost this thing. I guess tapping the islands, <laughs> maybe not necessary. All right. Get hit for two down to 11, and then maybe use the map token if you've got nothing else to do. Map token on that, hitting Manamorphos. Okay, so now I have to do eight damage. So I need, so I just need the name sticker to hit four, I think. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I still think I want to kill both those things. So if I go name sticker goblin here, let's see, five. Cast Shatter Skull Smashing, so I'll do four and two. Done. Oh, I, I remember now. So I have to do eight and four. And then, because it's using up all my mana here. And then I take two, oh, I guess all minus one, sure. Kill those. 
I actually have one of the best threats that I could imagine playing here. I can slam this. I just need to hope that whatever this is, it doesn't attack me for too much damage. Tireless Tracker, Prismatic Vista. Uh, that's pretty good. Vista was a really nice draw. Wow. That is unfortunate that that was the fifth land. Um, this doesn't have Vigilance, but I could attack for a lot. If I draw Ancestral next turn, I'll cast Ancestral and hope to hope to hit uh, a land. No, I didn't I didn't want to draw a land first. I'm actually gonna play my land. Getting mana tied there seems like that'd be pretty bad. Cauldra complete. And I think I've gotta just pass here. I don't think I don't think it works to attack. Attack down to twelve, then I get attacked back with a four a four, maybe five power creature. Well, Ultimately, I'm going to lose both these games because I ran out of spells first. And I did keep land heavy hands in both cases and drew badly from there on out, which is unfortunately seems to be a recurring theme these days. I need to, need to work on that. If I draw Ancestral, I could definitely win this. I could also draw like Palace Jailer would be a pretty strong one here. We're getting to the past the point where Chandra would really do it. Inti does not do it either from here. Okay, and Flame Tongue Cub. Yeah, that's part of why I didn't attack. Yeah, sure, kill my name sticker goblin. That's not a big deal. Inferno Titan would be a nice draw. I would take Chandra still. All right, Ancestral. I need some something that's some good action. Yeah, Chandra definitely counts. Chandra, Nug the Tireless Tracker. And now I've got... The germ token's pretty tough to deal with. Living weapon's indestructible, and so is the germ. So it's possible I could hide behind this germ and just win with Chandra. That seems potentially doable. I'm gonna need Jesse not to have too much, though I'm not surprised Naya Midrange is good, being good against Red White. Like cards like Tireless Tracker, Asika's Chariot, Flame Tongue Kavu, Bone Crusher Giant are just all so good in the aggro mirror. So I'm hoping this isn't something. Bone Horde Dracosaur. Okay. I guess I need to have got one turn to draw something. Any Palace Jailers or Ancestrals. Adeline is a good card, but... A Braid. No, that doesn't do it either. Um, I mean, I guess I'll kill the Flame Tongue. And lose badly from there. Play Adeline. This is going to exile the top two cards and then just make a 3-1 and a treasure and they get to play the top two cards. Like, I I just don't see how I could win this game. Oh yeah, Bonehorn Dracosaur is exactly the kind of card I'm talking about. Uh, Dromoka's Command. Sure. I mean, I guess I will attack. Okay. Exile the top two cards. Ranger Captain of Eos and Seeker's Chariot. Good lord. Ragavan. All right. All right. We're, we're done here. We're done here. All right. A beating round one. Let's get on to round two. All right. We got some good red zone action. Timrod's playing against Theo, whose deck looks great, by the way. Mox from Diamond, Mox, Ruby, Time Twister, all that. Theo's attacking with three Nissa lands. And Tim had mid combat flash <laughs> worm to block all three. That's pretty sick. Though. Theo also has infinite mana with Kinnon plus Basalt Monolith, so it could still be pretty bad, especially since Tim has no cards in hand. Still still nice, though. Still pretty good. Let's see what uh, the Basalt Monolith brings to the table here. Oof. Unfortunately, it's a portal to Frexia. Yeah, and Theo already Time Twister and Narsetted this game, so... Despite the, the Flash killing three lands there, this, this game looks... I would say extremely over here. Okay, I mean, Tim's just going to draw and probably concede, I would imagine. Especially since uh, the Restless Vinestock is also can come calling. All right, unfortunate. But let's get to our round two here. Alrighty, time for round two. I guess I'm going to keep this hand. Theo's playing blue-green. A braid's pretty good against him. 
And uh, Solitude Solid. I guess this is just a... And remember, Shatter Skull Smashing is a, a, a red land. This is just going to be a, a Braid Your Play, maybe Get Lost Your Play, and then play Chandra kind of game. At some point, I might draw Black Lotus, but it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I'm not holding my breath. And uh, I'm starting on Mox Diamond, which makes a removal hand pr pretty good. Oh, Ancient Tomb. Turn one Basalt Monolith. Okay. That's something, I guess. Um, let's just play the Mountain, because if I draw another Mountain, I will be glad I didn't play the Shatter Skull. I have a natural opening to play it on turn three here, and... I don't really mind paying some life against uh, a blue-green deck. I could have braid Mox Diamond next turn. It'll kind of depend what land Theo plays or what, well, also like what spells he plays this turn. Mm, turn to Karn, okay. And reveal the top two, nice. Okay, so you can have a Gemstone Cavern. And then I'm gonna just get lost the Karn. Get Lost is a strong card. I do like it. It's got three cards in hand. One's Gemstone Caverns. All right, this this is starting to feel a little more winnable. Still wouldn't hate a Lotus. <laughs> uh, getting to go Get Lost into a Braid into Chandra, maybe with Solitude sprinkled in there. Seems pretty reasonable to me. But we'll see what uh, Theo is up to here. And I will take my turn, Mountain, get lost, targeting Karn. So now I'm really glad he didn't make a Construct, because instead of getting, he would have had a 5-5 five five because of all the map tokens. Instead, he just got a Gemstone Caverns in hand. Reasonable play given the board, but uh, <laughs> it worked out pretty well for me. He's played a lot more cards than I have, but I don't feel like it's necessarily a game over here. I mean, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I guess I'd hope not. All I've done is go land, land, kill kill your first big play. Hope I don't lose from there. But there's definitely plenty of combinations that would be pretty bad for me from here. And Theo's got Talisman. Remember, he's still got Gemstone Caverns in hand. No longer has Gemstone Caverns in hand. No other play. All right. Uh, mountain, say go. I've got an Abrade. I don't really think killing Basalt Monolith makes sense. I could have braided Mox Diamond. That kills his green source. Yeah, let's actually do that. We'll see if this ends up not working out. But he also, he's got a bunch of double blue cards as well. I don't know. Maybe this slows him down. Also, if he had a green and he could play a creature, that would let him use those map tokens, which hopefully I've managed to evade. All right. Seed Shark. <laughs> Yavimaya, so that didn't work at all. All right. Hit Tamio Collector of Tales. And now it's a 3-5, so I can't Chandra it. <laughs> a braid wouldn't have really gotten me out of that, but it is just kind of funny. All right. Uh, oust? Yeah, let's just oust this. Well, if I oust it, he gets to Tamio it. Because he left Tamio on top. He gets to go Tamio and immediately just plus one name Chrome Host Seed Shark. No, I don't like that. So let's actually go Plains, Chandra. Mm. So my top card, maybe it's Lotus. <laughs> it's Lion Sash, all right. And then Exile to cast Solitude, which I don't, like I said, I don't, don't love. I was hoping to hard cast Solitude. That would have, that would help, but I don't think I can let him do that. And then now when he plays Tamio, I can sh plus Chandra and cast a big Shatter Skull Smashing and maybe mitigate the damage. I'm playing Red Away Control here, which is not the position I want to be in. But if I can kind of deal with his... Uh... Oh, so he played Tamio as his last card. Wow, he gets... thanks to Yavimaya, you can tap Ancient Tomb, not take damage. I guess I'm one short of killing Tamiya, but now he's just going to go Karn. And he's going to make a 4-4. Four -four. Mm -hmm. It's funny, he can use a map token, but it breaks even. <laughs> All right, kind of want him to hit a land here, actually. That would be nice. 
I mean, I think using the map token makes sense because if your top card's a bad spell or a land, you really do want to get it off there. Oh, man, that's a time twister? Oof, we are not catching many breaks here. I mean, I assume you leave time twister on top. On my next turn, I can cast Shatter Skull Smashing for five. I guess I just kill both Planeswalkers and then leave the Construct token in play, which can't quite kill Chandra. I actually kind of hope Theo bins the time twister thinking that he's got his double planeswalkers make it better to not have it but when you don't have no cards and have three four five six seven mana plus basalt monolith equity it feels like you probably keep the time twister all right and indeed he did inti senestral of the sun uh that doesn't do anything for me mm, yeah i think this is all right well we're gonna go into Time Twister here with two planes, no Planeswalker on his side. Unfortunately, I don't think the Construct is going to be bad. Maybe I should have minus Chandra and then just killed Karn. I just kind of hate leaving Tamiyo in play. Okay. I think you tap Island Yavamaya Gemstone Caverns for this. Or Ancient Tomb, that's fine too. All right, Time Twister. There's my Lotus. Didn't hit Solitude, but I got... I mean, Lotus after Time Twister is actually kind of nice because now I can have a, maybe a potentially pretty explosive turn. What I'm hoping is he doesn't play two artifacts here. Oh, it's like impossible for him not to. Yeah, maybe I should have just killed the Construct, honestly. Certainly... Uh, Makes sense, though. I'm going to get to Palace Jailer, right? which is also pretty nice. He's got five cards in hand. Well, we'll see. It'll really depend on what the last couple of cards he plays. He also does have Force of Will and Force of Negation, so when he's got a bunch of cards in hand and or mana up, I do have to watch out for my spells getting countered. Oh, Chandra's not dying? Well, that's fantastic news. Okay, Chandra goes down to one, but that is not game over. For Chandra, that is. And Kinnan can make infinite colorless, but... Oh, wait. He's got a Mox Diamond, too, so... I guess I needed to draw Solitude. <laughs> uh, I don't think this is going to work out very well for me. Yeah, he, he gets infinite colorless. Let's see, what, let's see what he does with that. Can't say I like this situation. It will highly depend on what the, the last play is here with this Kinnan. He's got Mox Diamond, so he can tap it for two of a single color, which means he can't activate it, but it means almost any spell he could play here. I guess we'll have to see what that spell happens to be. Oh, he had not, he had not played a land yet. Okay, so he's going to chart a course. Maybe that leads to infinite. No, no. Okay, okay, we're done. We're done there. So now what are we doing? We're gonna want a Palace Jailer, maybe Shatter Skull Smashing. Mm, so how much mana? I have six, eight, 11, up to 12 mana if I really want it all. Let's start with, given that he could counter me, I think I start with Palace Jailer here. Or maybe I start with Shatter Skull Smashing for two. Um. I think I start with Shatter Skull Smashing for two, and I think I'm gonna want, am I gonna, oh, let's actually just play, do I wanna play the Lotus? I don't know. I mean, I guess I could, I could spend a lot of mana in Shatter Skull Smashing both. How much mana would that cost? It would cost seven, nine mana? Or seven mana? Or no, no, eight mana, because I would just get to doubled. So if it costs eight mana, I guess I could Shatter Skull Smashing both if I can if I play Palace Jailer and it gets countered. That doesn't that doesn't seem I don't I don't like that. I think I'm gonna go. Let's add red red. Well, if I go Shatter Skull, so if I have nine mana, Shatter Skull Smashing ten mana. I don't have to use Chandra for mana, but then I think I should just use Chandra for mana because then I don't have to use maybe Grim or Lotus here. Okay. Shatter Skull Smashing for two. 
And if he has the force, he might force this now. Okay. And is this force of will? Oh, I guess what he does, if he's got force of negation, he just casts it here. All right, so force of negation, that counters that. Lotus. And seven, eight mana, I just cast all my cards, I think. So let's go sack this for white. Grim Monolith. I guess I'm going to assume that I'm not getting Force of Willed here, but we'll see. <laughs> Palace Jailer. Okay, and then I'm going to exile the Kinnon. I just have to get that off the board. And then play Inti. And then I still have a Virtue, which I will probably just wait to play. I don't think... No... Let's just cast this now, because I would want to chump with it. Actually, I don't really need to chump with it. Let's just wait. I don't really know what I can draw here, but I don't really mind if I top if I chump with Palace Jailer. I mean, that was a pretty good turn. After, after all, we'll see what Theo has here. I could also play Virtue and Triple Block. That might be decent. Instead of chumping with one, it's like trading Inti and Palace Jailer for the construct. Is Inti a lot better? Oh, I guess it's just going to get countered. Which, honestly, I don't really mind that much. Hardcast Force. Okay, well, in that case, I'm just going to chump with Palace Jailer. I think that's acceptable. And then on my turn, I get to look at a lot of stuff between Chandra and Inti, and maybe he's out of gas here. Very well possible, because, oh, Adeline? Yeah, we'll play that first. And first, I want to attack here. And then discard. Let's go ahead and I think I will put the counter on the Inti still. Discard Mountain, the counter on the Inti, hit Plains. So now I think I've got to go Plains and play the Plains and then flip the top card and hope I get a castable here. Ugh, Inferno Titan? That's gross. All right, well, I'm still doing pretty well here. I'm not... It's unfortunate that was one of the few spells I couldn't cast, but this is still, I think, totally fine. Because I will just chump the construct with Adeline. I can't let him have a Kinnon back, of course. And then on my next turn, I get to untap Grim Monolith end of turn. And between my draw step, Cycling Sunbake Canyon, Chandra, and Inti, I feel like I have a pretty good shot at getting lethal stuff down. Oh, what is, what is this? We're tapping Basalt Monolith? Ugh. I thought I had this game in good shape, despite... All odds aside, is this like an upheaval? I mean, uh, whatever it is, I'm dead. I, I, don't, I don't know what it could be, but 13 mana? It's like a pest infestation for 60 or something. <laughs> okay. Now I really need that Inferno Titan, man. Because this does look like a pest infestation, sure. Smart, he targeted his own talisman just in case so I didn't uh, blow up my own... Uh, monolith. <laughs> Thanks, Flickerwisp. <laughs> right on time. Uh, Theo's on 9? I'm on 20? Maybe I let him have his Kinnon back? Let's see. Because I'm thinking... What do I do here? Because I can Flickerwisp to kill the Construct. I think I have to attack with Inti. Because it just trades a lot more favorably if I do, and I think discarding this and and getting something out of it could be pretty good. Lauren, all right, Lauren's actually not bad. Oh, Lauren's actually great, because I can kill the Basalt Monolith, and at least then the uh, 
Kinnan coming back is not the end of the world. He gets to activate it like once. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is right to put all the pests here, all right. Okay, pests down. You gain some life, that's fine. So given that, I think I still probably plus one Chandra for exiling the top card. Hit planes, Lauren. Kill Basalt Monolith, and then Flicker Wisp kills the Construct token. And then pass the turn, draw my card for Monarch. Yeah, I mean, this, this is still something. There's eight pests. Unfortunately, all my creatures have one toughness. So I don't love that. I don't love that he's playing a card before attacking either. Metamorph. What's that going to copy? A Flicker Wisp? Kill my human token, I guess. Uh, actually, I'm going to crack this Sunbaked Canyon end of turn. Oh, my, my Inferno Titan being gone is actually really brutal here. Well, the good news is he doesn't get to kill Chandra and become the Monarch. He has to choose. It's going to become the Monarch, I would assume. Because if he wants to send six at Chandra, that kills it, and then two at me, I just block the two that are coming at me. Okay, so two coming at me and six at Chandra. Let's draw a card. Let's see what we get here. Solitude. That's a pretty good one. All right, let's... Since we can't save Chandra... Well, I mean, I could save Chandra by pitching Solitude, but I can't win the game if I do that, so... I'm gonna do this. I take or I take nothing. Chandra dies. Theo goes to thirteen. I lose both my creatures. On my turn, I play Scholar, draw a card off Monarch, and pass. And then I go Solitude on the Flicker Wisp, and Scholar blocks the pests. And I actually, this seems winnable. Cauldra Complete is actually not bad either. I think I'm going to play that next turn because I think this gives me a lot more value this turn. Scholar, pass the turn, draw a card. I, I mean, I can't beat anything else, but I mean, I'm beating turn one or turn two Karn with, <laughs> you know, Tammy of both forces. Uh, sure, Noble doesn't really do too much. I mean, I assume you're attacking with everything still. All right. A pest infestation for, you know, X equals six, which is a lot. <laughs> I'm kind of grinding it out. So I need my Inferno Titan. Okay, Solitude, the Flicker Wisp. He is going to get Kinan back, which I don't love, but I do get to eat two insects. I actually end up only taking one point of damage net, and then... Kinnon comes back. He's drawing a card end of turn. But then I get to attack back with a Cauldra Complete and a, potentially a Solitude. And Cauldra Complete, I mean, I wouldn't say it guarantees gets me a thing. Is he going to kin in here? Or what's going on? This looks like a Kinnon activation. All right, Kinnon. Kinnon miss. That helps, all right. And then I also have a Student of Warfare, all of these cards at white. Cauldra Complete. Mm. I'm gonna attack with this, it'll give me the Monarch back and then I'll leave back these two because it'll punish him to attack because I'm not interested in getting his life total here. Like, he's at too high of life for me to, to just attack with everything and have that work. I want to kill as many pest tokens as I can. In post-combat, I even have the Student of Warfare. All right. Pass the turn. Draw. I still have a Lightning Bolt in my deck. A Hero Blade Hold in my deck. Those are both pretty good. 
Theo gets to activate Kinnon one time here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two. Oh, wait, he gets to activate it twice. Yeah, all right. Well, I don't know what he has left to hit, but he's going to get a good chance to look at it. <laughs> so I guess we'll see. Oh, Tamio. Collector of Tales is back. What are we getting back? Time Twister? And we're just Time Twistering and didn't get Basalt back. Okay, I'll take a Time Twister. We'll do it again. Well, th this game's ended up being pretty sick, not going to lie. All right, action. I mean, that's a pretty solid hand, I would imagine. Okay. Talisman, sure. Two mana, four mana, Karn. Yeah, I really do, I don't mind the Karn too much. I can kill those four fours pretty easily. Tough cookie. Okay. And does he want to throw away some pests to become the monarch? I don't know. It makes it a lot harder to defend planeswalkers if you do that. I do like drawing Lotus. Uh, what am I doing here? Almost assuredly going to want to lure in the Construct token. And I probably need to get lost the Kinnon. Though I guess I could also Flicker Wisp the Construct. Maybe that's better. So let's go Flicker Wisp. Remember, he does have some forces in hand or in deck, which he might be casting. I might, I don't know, I might be able to just go through, you know, we're both just going through our entire deck here <laughs> of cards, which is funny. Lauren. Lauren, I think I blow up the tough cookie. That one seems a little more threatening. I'm going to want to get lost the Kinnon. The question is, what do I want to do with this Lotus? I think I play the Lotus here. And, well, I don't, maybe I don't need to get lost quite yet because I don't think he is going to block with Kinnon anyway. Do I want to, I guess I want to level up Student of Warfare twice, but maybe I do that by just playing Sacred Foundry, level up Student of Warfare, Level up Student of Warfare, then post-combat I can play Get Lost and do something else. All right, so I want to kill Karn. Attack Karn. Attack Tamio. Attack Tamio. And then do I want to leave this back? So just to block two on Tamio. I guess if I attack Tamio again, no, I'll just do it like this. I think this is fine. And then I'm going to play Get Lost on Kinnon. And probably Virtue of Loyalty afterwards here. I don't think I need to put Stoneforge into play. And oh, my Lion Sash is exiled anyway. So yeah, yeah I guess I really shouldn't do that. All right, Karn's going down. Tamio's a problem for next turn, but not a not one I'm too worried about. All right. And post combat. Get lost Kinnon. You get some maps and cast Arden Veil vale Fealty. Alright. Hard casting the virtue also could do. Could do some work at some point here. This has been a wild game. All right, there's a lightning bolt. That's not bad. I guess at this point, we're going to find out what every card in his deck is. At some point, he's going to cast another pest infestation. I guess that's the thing I'm worried about. That's not something I can do anything about, but maybe Virtue. I really wish I had Lion Sash here. Lion Sash would actually be amazing. Virtue... Getting a plus one, plus one counter on my whole team. I think I can outgrind a pest infestation, but I I guess I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> he's going to name pest infestation. Oh, he's going to name something that he saw off Sylvan. Mm, portal to Frexia. Right. I guess portal is a reason to save Loran or something. I don't know. Mm, one, two... I guess I'll sack the Student of Warfare, three. Well, I guess Portal gets back Kinnon is the issue. 
if I can equip Cauldra here, how close am I to lethal? Having a braid, right? That's not gone? Yeah. I have four, nine mana, ten mana. So the equipping this is seven, so I have three left, so I have enough to bolt as well. Okay, chart a course. Discard island. And map token, reveal forest. Map token, reveal Narset. Narset, I guess, does something? I don't really know. All right. I'm hoping to draw a braid here, I guess. Like, that would be a pretty nice one. Oh, Chandra could be good, too. So if I play Chandra, I really want to equip the sword this turn. But I guess playing Chandra first, I can play Chandra, equip sword, and still have bolt up. Yeah, is that better? What do I get out of doing that? And then he gets to put back in a Kinnon, but I, I, I want to try to bolt that. I think I want to play the Chandra. I also want to get Chandra down while uh, Theo does not have counter magic. Let's put one, two, three, four, five. Sword on Solitude, and then I get to attack Tamio with this one and attack Theo with that. I'm not offering the lore end trade. <laughs> okay, so Tamio goes down, presum well, not presumably even, just does. I hit Theo down to eight, and then I have a bolt in hand, though the bolt might have to go after Kinnon, though actually I don't know what Kinnon does. He's got eight cards left in his deck. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, Tamio is out of here, and end of turn, I get to draw off the Monarch, because I still have that. And then now he does get to Portal to Frexia here. I guess Kinnon's got to be it, and then he can play, he's going to be able to play a Pest Infestation. Oh, I guess, <laughs> I guess if he plays Basalt Monolith, I've got a Bolt Kinnon in response because of Pest Infestation, though. Actually, a huge Pest Infestation doesn't do it. I can just move Cauldra to Flicker Wisp. He's got to do better than that. Mm. That still makes me want to Bolt. Oh, he's got the Food Token, so now I've got to save the Bolt then for the Food Token. Where did he get that Food Token from? Narset? Sure. Oh, Tough Cookie, that's what it was. All right, Narset away. I guess if you find a counterspell, it's unfortunate. There's the Basalt Monolith. Mm -hmm. What is this for four mana? Five mana? Nissa? Uh -uh. What does he have exiled here? Chrome Host and Metamorph. I guess those are good to have exiled. I'm thinking... It's now the time to bolt Kinnan. All his lands are forests. He has a ton of mana. I don't think so. I don't know what Nyssa does. What does it do? I guess it can attack my Chandra. Mm -hmm. Or attack me and take the Monarch back, but I don't know if that's even actually good. Okay. All Yavimaya and Nissa is actually a pretty funny combination. I mean, we're actually getting to the point where I think Bolting Kinnon is probably fine here. He can't really cast too much more. Well, let's see. Yeah, it feels... So I would be one point short, and then he'd be able to get Kinnon back next turn. What do I have left in my deck? Let me check here, because it's actually kind of important. I don't have any other burn spells. I have Inti. Inti can deal an additional damage. <laughs> and that's basically it. Uh, huh. All right. I guess I'm going to let him have infinite mana. 
I don't really know. Oh. Okay, and now he's attacking. Attacking Chandra for four. Yeah, so if I block with Loran, I mean, I don't actually care if he gets a Loran back with uh, the who's a what's it. I think I just let this go. And crack the food. Yeah, here at 11. Okay, draw for turn. Inti was, is actually like a really good draw here if I can find it. So if I move the, I guess I can't crack Sunbait Canyon now. Theo has blue, blue. So actually what I can do, hold on. Oh, he's still got blue, blue off the noble. Damn. I was thinking I could Chandra the Kinnon to make it so he couldn't cast a counter spell, but I can't do that. I mean, I still think I... Do I want to Chandra the Kinnon? Does that do anything? I guess not. Let's play the Sunbaked Canyon. Let's move... Oh, hello, Jules. <laughs> Hi, Julie Dog. Good girl. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Move that to the Flicker Wisp. Attack with this. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I guess I just have to throw the bolt out there, right? I don't know. I don't really have a better play. I hope he doesn't have a force in hand. Seems unlikely, but I don't really have... Whoa! <laughs> Another option. What a game. Unbelievable. <laughs> I thought I was... No chance. Uh, I do want Arc Trail and Grim. Don't actually want Ancestral here, I don't think. Armageddon is kind of interesting. He has so much non land mana that it makes me a little less inclined. I also looked kind of bad, actually. Get Lost was great. Um, I like most of this stuff still. Mm. I gotta cut one card. It might be Student of Warfare, just because I'm boarding in a little bit of the ground game here. I don't think I want Lavador. It's good against Noble, and that's about it. All right, I think... This is the plan. All right, Whew, what a game. Time for game two. We actually restarted because that game was just so so long and I had to restart Magic Online. My Magic Online was lagging. All right, I will keep this hand. It's got a braid, it's got Scholar. Scholar on the draw is actually pretty nice. Play this on the draw, then on my turn three, I get to put a tap it to put a land into play for my deck and uh, play a land, then play my third land. I get to kind of have it all. Lion Sash isn't the worst. Theo Mold of 5. Well, that's not ideal. Is he playing around my Scholar of New Horizons? Could that be it? That was a sick game. That was like one of the best games I've seen uh, in this, you know, in this cube for a long time. It's just Boros grinding out blue-green Time Twister that cast two Time Twisters where we just went through our entire decks twice and then somehow he had six cards left and both his forces were there. <laughs> oh, what a what a game. Okay, let's just get the Sacred Foundry. Land. Well, I didn't really want to draw all these lands, but look at this. If he goes land this turn, I get to put a land into play, then flicker wisp the scholar. It's awesome. Alright. Do this. Planes, up around the battlefield. Yes, yes, I would. Land, flicker. Let's go ahead and flicker my scholar here and get more lands, which is going to be good because uh, that means I can hard cast this cauldra. So I like it. I like it. Mindstone? Don't mind if I do. Um, 
Let's just attack for five here. I don't need to, I don't need to cash in the scholar yet. And I think I'm gonna attack for five, then play Lion Sash and say go. I don't think I need to cast Solitude this turn. And it lets me keep up a braid plus Lion Sash activation. Not that activating Lion Sash is the end all be all of any of any sort. Alright, let's hit for five here. And then play the sash. Getting sashy here. And will he crack Mindstone? No, he's got bigger fish to fry, but it's going to be pretty screwed in a second here. Is this a time twister? No, it's his tinker. Mm. I couldn't really abrade the Mindstone, I don't think. Oh, he had portal in hand. <laughs> Beating. I'm sorry, Theo. That is, that is, that is truly unlucky. Uh, let's abrade the Basalt Monolith and then... Try to eat it with the Lion Sash here. Ooh, most of five and draws Portal. All right, well. Oh, and I drew Lotus. So now I can cast Cauldra. All right. And yeah, I'll just send, exile the Mind Stone, and exile the Arid Mesa, I think. And that puts him to one. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that'll do it. <laughs> well, that game wasn't exciting, but we're one and one. We're on the board, and we're going to round three. All right, round three, playing against Adham with uh, Luris deck, a pretty sick-looking Luris deck. So let's see what Addy's got here. I've got a keepable hand is what I have. We're, we're ready for a grind. I'm bringing in the Ancestral, no question, in this matchup. Just Luris all removal. The games are going to go long. I'm just Boros controlling everyone is what I'm doing. <laughs> That's my plan here. All right, turn one, Savannah top. Sure, that's fine. Plains was the worst card in my deck, no big deal. It's possible that uh, drawing the Cauldra complete could be worse than drawing a Plains, but I don't even know if that's true because... I have Stoneforge in my deck. Or rather, I have Scholar. Stoneforge is the re argument against. Scholar is the argument for draw wanting to draw Cauldra over a Plains because I actually could just cast it. I assume Scholar is going to get blown up by some kind of removal spell. And Addy over here has Top with Savannah, Spin it. If he doesn't like what he sees, Crack Marsh Flats. I mean, he's got a good Lurus deck. He's got the K Command, Demonic Tutor, good amount of removal, some fixing. Just everything you want out of Alluris. I don't mind if this Scholar dies. Obviously, I'd kind of prefer it didn't because the Scholar Flicker Wisp curve on the draw is actually pretty sick. You end up with lots of lands, lots of resources. But I've got some good follow-ups here. I've got three powerful three drops depending on what I'm facing here. Scholar hits and top is about to get spun unless, unless he's got a two-mana play, but it's... You really don't want to crack your marsh flats before using top. Oh, he does have a two mana play. Well, that's is what it is. No containment priest. Oh, that could be really good for me. With containment priest in play, if he plays like a, a creature this turn, I can go flicker wisp your other creature, and then containment priest actually stops it from coming back. So that would be pretty nice if we got to see that. I do think my scholar is probably not long for this world. Yeah, there's a fatal push. And adversary. Well, that's a really good one for me to, to pick up for free with Flicker Wisp, isn't it? Okay. Draw. Oh, Chandra's not bad either. Flicker Wisp. Whoop. A little too intrepid for your own good. And it's exiled, which means Luris cannot bring it back, which is nice. And then next turn, Mountain would be nice for Chandra, but I kind of want to save the Chandra until the Luris hits the board anyway. So I'm somewhat likely to be playing Adeline, and because he doesn't have a reason not to, he's going to attack with Containment Priest. I'm not going to block. And then I go Adeline, bash back with some tokens. I'm kind of hoping he puts Luris in hand with no land and takes a damage. Yeah, that's excellent. That's really good news for me. Oh, Shatter Skull Smashing. I'm just going to play the Adeline. The reason I don't want to play Smashing Tapped is, yeah, I might save three damage, but 
A, it signifies I have a double red card in hand, and B, if I draw another mountain, having Smashing in hand as a spell is going to be so much better. Smashing has been awesome. It's been a very good addition to cube. All right. Well, you can top up keep in a bit of trouble here. The Loran's not doing much, but you know, Loran targeting Sensei's Dividing Top does ultimately cost him a mana. Adarino over here would have to tap the top to draw, and because he's already stuck on three lands, though he easily could have topped into a land here, though probably just a way to kill Adeline is a little bit more like it. Oh, uh, those swords too? That's the, the good way to do it. Okay. Do I want to blow up Chromatic Star? Not really. Oh, okay, well now... I'm going to play Shatter Skull to Hammer Pass. Play Chandra. I'm just going to nug the Containment Priest. Drawing Inferno Titan was awesome because now I get to bash down to eight, hit again, plus Chandra and deal damage, and then play Inferno Titan. And I imagine that'll be good enough. Basically, every turn, I've had a great play. Scholar just traded for a Fatal Push. That was actually slightly disadvantageous. I traded a two-mana spell for a one-mana spell. But Flicker Wisp came in and ate an Intrepid Adversary. Adeline came in, made a token, then got Swords. Chandra came in, killed Containment Priest. Like, it all worked out pretty well. All right. What do you got here? It's got to be somewhat decent. Lingering Souls? Yay! That is a good play against a Chandra and a Flicker Wisp and all that. Not going to be good enough, though. Um, I guess I'm actually going to... Oh, it's just straight up. This is just enough to, to, to kill Adam right here. He goes to 5, Titan 1-1-1, one, 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 attack you. That ought to do it. Exiling the top card here. Yump. Uh, no. And... Big Boros. Boros control, baby. <laughs> That's how it's done. Let's go ahead and finish this game off. And then against Luris post board. I do want the Ancestral. I do want Grim Lava Mancer. I don't know that I want Lava Dart. Because I didn't see many one toughness creatures. Even looking at, you know, the replays from when my uh, teammates played them. All right, that's game one. And let's go ahead and move to sideboarding here. All right, so sideboarding. I want the three islands. I want the ancestral. I'll take out plains, plains, mountain. I want grim lava mancer. Uh, what do I not want? And this all seems pretty great. I will say that. Oust. Oust is okay. It's not fantastic. I don't think I want Armageddon. I don't think I want... No, Arc Trail's probably fine too. Yeah, I'll take out Oust. I'll take out Student of Warfare because it just gets killed. Same with the Danto Vanguard. All right. Let's get in there. Let's see what our hand looks like in game two here. It's funny, they've still seen islands and no blue cards, so so they don't know about the Ancestral, but they've got to think, like, maybe he's got something lurking here. And a fantastic hand. The Ancestral did not cost me, so I love it. All right, I'll keep this hand. And my plan is to go turn two Stoneforge, turn three Loran, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how things develop. And see what. We've got turn one soul ring. Oh, all right. Phew, look at this. The good thing is Esper Sentinel is not the end of the world for me. All right, well, this is going to be a tough start. By the time I lore in the soul ring, he'll have gotten to use it three times, which I'm not relishing. So we'll see. On the other hand, if his next play, he's going to put Luris into hand if his last two cards are both lands this could be okay 
I'm definitely going to go for the Gusto here, and uh, Stoneforge is going to get the Cauldra. There is always some question of, like, do you want to get something that you could cast if Stoneforge dies? But here I'm so far behind that I'm going to get Cauldra complete on purpose this time. <laughs> Last time I got uh, the Lion Sash, or the first time when I got Lion Sash, that was a bit awkward. Ooh, did he didn't kill it. End of turn. And he tapped his mana such to not leave up Fatal Push. Probably doesn't have it. It's got Luris and three others. So if this doesn't die, I'm feeling pretty good. If he's just casting a Luris, no. That was too much to hope for, I think. What is this? Mind Collapse? Now with Luris on the horizon, uh, a Fiery Confluence. <laughs> Killed both creatures, sure. Two damage to each creature. All right. You know, he played Mountain. I think... I think I'm going to play Loran. And I think I'm going to kill the Talisman. Can't cast Lur Luris right now. Obviously, he could cast Luris if he had any black or white source, but... Killing the Sol Ring does nothing. I, he just cast Luris, recast Sol Ring. At least now, it forces him to recast Talisman off of Luris instead of something better. And there is a chance that he's not able to play the Luris, in which case next turn I get to name sticker Goblin <laughs> into Chandra. Uh, I'll take it. I don't really want to block here. Okay, so he's going to get to recast the Luris, but I'm going to get to kill the Luris. Which I like. And. Yeah, he's gonna play Talisman. He can't play the Esper Sentinel. Oh, he attacked. Right, that makes sense. Okay, so let's start with Name Sticker Goblin, because no matter what I end up playing, this is the place I start. Alright, any six balls? No, five. Still pretty good, because then I go Chandra, Nuggleris, and then play Inti. And then I get to bash, and I'm not going to discard here. I just won't be able to play the card off the top, so it doesn't really make sense. This looks great. I'm not discarding a card for a plus muslim counter. It's kind of what I, to finish that thought, but this looks great. I mean, he's got to have a lot of ways to kill things, and he's used Fiery Confluence already. Also, a Planeswalker is kind of difficult to kill, and Luris is already in the bin here. Swiss Spear could attack Chandra. I'll definitely block. I guess if he attacked with Swiss Spear, I might just double block with these two. Definitely not using... Oh, Caracas for Inti is kind of nice. Wow, Caracas to protect Luris. I'm really glad he drew that a turn later. Caracas is, is strong. Um, let's just go for the Gusto here once more. Red, red. I'm going to complete the, sh the Cauldra. I am going to get my Legends bounced here. So I don't think it's going to work out. I mean, I guess, yeah, he's going to bounce the Inti. I'm going to attack, and I'm going to attack with the Loran too. Because if Swiss Spear wants to trade for Loran, I'm fine with that. If he's got another spell, that's also fine. It didn't seem like he did. With the Caracas out, the Loran wasn't doing too much. And Swiss Spear off the board... Makes it a lot safer to keep this Chandra around. Okay, he's going to crack the Silent Clearing for a card. But this is looking pretty tough for him. Boros Control does it again. <laughs> uh, next turn, I get to do a bunch of stuff. Let's start by winning the match. 2-1 and one after a really unfortunate start. No Ancestrals ever, but I'm not complaining. 2-1 and one is great, especially after an 0-1 start. And uh, my team is now up 4-3. to three. We started 0-3, we won our last four. Let's see if we can finish things off while checking on the team. All right, we're coming in on game two, Max battling Theo. You remember Theo's deck? This is the one who time twisted a million times. Mac got hit by a turn two portal and needs show and tell in an Ulamog. Oh, Theo did not look like he had a lot of answers to this. Portal gets back Glint Sleeve Siphoner, and this is this is for the draft. Timrod lost his last round, so Timrod's 2-1-2, two, two. I'm 2-1, Max 1-1, one, one. we're tied 4-4. Four four. Winner of this match wins the draft, and uh, oh man, this is this is this is close. 
if Theo can answer Ulamog, then that's it. But if he can't, then Max is going to win in a landslide. Is this a metamorph? Oh, that would be such a beating. It feels like it's a metamorph. So you can metamorph the portal and force another Ulamog sack. Oh, now there's two portals in play, but there's no creatures in the graveyard. This is going to be a weird game. Okay, so what is Max supposed to do here? I mean, obviously it depends on his hand, but like, I guess Dak Faden is interesting. Oh, Palantir. Oh, Palantir is risky because if you mill a creature, Theo gets to put it into play. This is a really funny interchange. Okay. So, Bazaar got milled. Theo's just going to choose to mill, of course. Siphoner doesn't have anything to do on upkeep because you need two energy to draw a card. Theo gets to attack for three with the Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Play a Mana Crypt. All right, two cards in hand. Now, now Theo's up to two energy, so he gets to draw an extra card next turn. What I, what I think is going to be really funny is when Mac casts uh, Dak Faden and takes a portal in it, and then it becomes dueling portals, which is very weird. Oh man, does Theo have more? More? Don't love that. Let's see what we got. Because Mac's already pretty far behind, though. You know, portal with nothing in the graveyard isn't technically doing anything. It just means if something does die, you lose. Is this a time twister? No, this is not a time twister. If this is a Tamiyo, then that's that's a beat. Because Tamiyo also plus oneing and milling creatures would be pretty sick. Okay. Paradoxical outcome. Wow. Bounce Mana Crypt, Noble Hierarch, and the Metamorph. So now Theo can replay Mana Crypt, replay Noble if he wants. You can also metamorph the Palantir. Though I guess Karn make a token is probably a pretty good start. Play Noble. Oof. And then at any point, he's got Portal on, on call here with a metamorph in hand. So don't think this is going my team's way. I imagine Theo's going to want to get milled again and hope... To, to bring something back with Portal, though he is playing with Fire. No, he's actually letting Mac draw. He doesn't want to lose. I guess Mac has Eldrazi and Theo's winning by so much. And he's got Mana Crypt in play. There's no reason to let Mac flip an Ulamog and a Gristlebrand and you just die. Okay, lost the flip. Mana Crypt's doing work. He did draw a card off Glint Sleeve Siphoner as well. Chrome Host Seed Shark. Uh, this, this, this looks like... Pretty close to game over here. Barring Mac having a, a nice comeback. I mean, if he discards an Eldrazi and attacks, it doesn't even do anything. Like, Theo just sacks a bunch of permanence and then that's it. All right. Well, that'll do it for this game. Going to game three for the entire draft. All right, game three. Max on the play. Turn one curtains. I'm really hoping Mox flip curtains turn two. Because... Remember, Mac has two moxes. Two. Let's go, Mac. Draw those mox in. All right. Theo mulligan once and has a noble, but no mox or mana crypt yet. Land. Mox. There we go. That's my boy. Come on, Mac. Oh, turn two Palantir. I love it. Get, get the train going. Because, you know, the first Palantir, they always mill. But sick if you find an Eldrazi. I love Palantir in the Reanimator decks. They can like never let you draw. Okay. Take 11. Just do it. Uh, all right. Took three off Corpse Dance. Not so bad. Kind of a shame to lose the Corpse Dance too. But turn one curtains, turn two Palantir into flip curtains next turn. I like where we're going with this. I like where we're going. Okay. So Theo played the... Not busted mox, so that's something. And I hope this isn't pest infestation. No Karn revealing portal and chrome host. Ooh, it's kind of nice to just stick chrome host there and portal in uh, Theo's hand. Now you know he can't 
tutor for it. Flipping curtains and attacking Karn is pretty appealing, I will say that. And we're also getting to the point where Theo's not really going to want to let the Palantir draw. <laughs> All right, so Theo's hand here is... Well, it doesn't have the Chrome Host. Or it doesn't have two portals. It has three cards in hand. It's Mana Crypt, Basalt Monolith, Portal of Phyrexia. Ooh, interesting decision. I mean, you certainly don't take the portal, I wouldn't imagine. The, well, the problem is, if you don't take one of the mana rocks, this is nine mana altogether if you're not stopping any of it. Hmm. I think you got to take mana crypt here. Yeah, and Mac did do that. The problem is, if you don't take mana crypt, like if you take portal or you take nothing, then Theo goes minus one Karn, put Chrome Host Seed Shark into, into hand, cast it, cast mana crypt, get a zero, zero, whatever, cast basalt, get a three, three and just has a bunch of mana in play. I think taking Mana Crypt slows that down dramatically. So if he wants to put Chrome Host Seed Shark into hand, then can cast it and do nothing else maybe. It's just not that bad. Uh, yeah, he's gonna get up to portal mana at some point here. Oh, and he milled a Palantir, milled a Voidwalker and a Mountain. He can't mill again. I don't think Theo's gonna mill again is my guess. Maybe he mills one more time. The Revealing Eye gets to finish off the Karn. Though, actually, that's not true. If you take the Seed Shark and play it, you can you can block it with the Noble and the Seed Shark, which you lose your Noble, but you keep the Karn around. Oh, we're doing something else. Okay. Three mana. There goes the Basalt Monolith. And so Portal's in hand. What is this? Is this a Tinker? What is Theo's backup Tinker target? Mac has the triplicate titan. Oh, he has a Bolus of Citadel. I didn't even know about that. Okay. Into Charter Course. Okay, well, this Palantir is now drawing cards for the rest of the game. I can tell you that much. I really hope Mac has a Dak in hand. So he discards Portal. Can we finish off the Citadel? Can we just chill? Oh, man, he gets to mill with Karn, too. That's sick. No more Citadel. Oh, Narset, we're keeping on going. Because now if it's bad, he gets to, to flip with Narset too. Oh, I don't like this. And a Time Twister off Narset. Oh. oh, it's all falling apart. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he can't play too... Oh, wait. Wait. No, no, no. This, this, just, this just wins the game. Incredible. So, here's the why it works that way. Narset in play means Theo cannot choose to have Mac draw a card, because that's not a legal action. He needs to bounce his own Narset or, or, or to get rid of the Palantir. Otherwise, Mac is going to get to just mill... He gets to mill three and deal that much damage after attacking with Concealing Curtains. What a comeback! Okay, okay. I just hope Theo doesn't kill either the Palantir or the Narset. Mm. Okay, okay. Um us in our in our in our group chat for the team was just like hold, hold, because like they actually fixed the magic online bug where you could let them draw a card with Narset in play. But this is amazing. So Theo does have a paradoxical outcome in hand. Ruby's under here. He's already played his land for the turn. He doesn't have anything. Mac has to miss so badly in order for this not to work. Like, he has to not hit four mana worth of cards after getting to scry two. Okay. Take you down to four. Pass the turn. Let's do it. Let's do it. All you need is four mana. That's all you need. I can't take it. Oh, oh, he's, his top two cards are Fable. And uh, Mountain is going to keep Fable on top. I think you got to keep a three mana spell on top. He milled Fable and Bazaar! <laughs> he couldn't get four mana out of five cards because he gets to mill three and he gets to look at two with the scry. Okay. So now Theo has Paradoxical Outcome in hand. So he's going to get to bounce his own Narset. Unreal. All right, let's see. The, the Bolsa Citadel doesn't do anything. Can make a construct so he doesn't die to the 
the ravaging eye. <laughs> yeah, this was sick. This was a sick, sick draft. Honestly, this draft was awesome. I I would have hoped to have won. Well, he's going to paradoxical outcome, so it doesn't really matter. That he plays the mana crypt. But I would, I would have loved to have won, even though it does not look like that is going to happen at this point. Because now Theo basically gets to draw a million cards. He can play Nyssa. All his lands are forests. I mean, he's literally got seven cards in his hand before all this. You can even bounce the Citadel because it's not doing anything for you. Bounce Mox Diamond to get another mana. You can even bounce no Noble. Don't know what Theo does with all that mana, but I assume it's something. It's not like Mac can do anything. And P.O. Whoop. 14 cards in hand now. I mean, Mac could, I think, draw maybe a removal spell. And... This, this will finish things off. I guess he would need two removal spells because of the noble. Mm, okay. And he gets to Palantir again, I guess. <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, we'll see how this goes. I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna work out for our team. I can't believe the Palantir didn't win there. Oh, he hit land, fable, Land, land. Because he left the fable on top. Which I think was right. Like, le leaving a three mana spell on top means any other spell does it. And Mac, I mean, if we, we, we could even take a look at Mac's deck here, has, yeah, all of these, hitting any of these spells alongside fable would have done it. Obviously, any of these do it no matter what. Yeah, he doesn't even have any fours. It's unbelievably bad to put fable on the bottom there. You just gotta kind of got to keep it. All right, well... We get a draw step here, and let's see what we get out of that draw step to deal one point of damage. Any love darts? So Mac doesn't have any burn. Again, we can go back and look at the deck list. Uh, to steal Theo discards a bunch of lands and a Sylvanture. He's going to get to draw an extra card off Palantir end of turn, but that's not very relevant. Okay, what is this? And is it, and is it great? Frantic search. Okay, it's, Theo didn't find a force of negation at least. So that's good. Discards Ulamog and Tarn. Tell me we found Corpse Dance. Oh, no Corpse Dance. What's our last card? Reginald? Yeah, that's not really going to do it. You can attack with Revealing Eye. It doesn't do much. Palantir is going to let you draw. And now Theo gets a whole nother turn to do to do his thing. With a lot of mana, because remember Nyssa gets to make it double mana thanks to Yavamaya. All the lands are forests. It's actually a pretty sweet little combo. Okay, tough cookie. Mm. That also gets you a food. We're actually getting pretty close to Citadel just being a way to get to lethal. I'm actually, I don't think there's any chance that Matt can win here. This is going to be Portal. We're going to get attacked for six or seven even, and then get Bull, Citadel, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to attack for a bunch actually because Nissa can also untap Karn, putting a Mox into hand, sure. Yeah, this looks this looks like lethal. Oh, what a sick draft. Started down 0-3, battled back to up to up 4-3, lost, then get to our last round, got turn two portaled, show and tell, got beaten by Metamorph, and then here, Palantir just had to flip four points of damage <laughs> out of five cards. Well, it was kind of like four cards because we kept the fable on top, but then it was still just any spell in the next two cards after Fable. And uh, unfortunately, this will do it. Sick draft. Well played by all. And uh, I mean, th th these are the drafts that are why you draft. Like, I, I would have rather won, but like, I'm so much more happy and energized after this draft than I would have been after, uh, you know, just your kind of average draft where you like draw badly and go one, two or something like that. Even even if my team would have ended up winning. Bull assisted at a last activation of the draft and uh, 
That will do it. I'll, I'll let the Citadel resolve because you don't get to see that super often. Six stuff. Theo winning at one life here. Yeah, this was just a sweet draft, and uh, I really do hope you enjoyed it. I do want to take a look at my deck, but I'll, I'll let I'll let Theo finish things off here. I do think that uh, as it turned out, the red white or being in white was open until basically around middle like somewhere in pack two and i think some other people switched into it but i really liked the deck i drafted and i went two one i thought you know thought it ended up nicely especially you know opening lotus ancestry of high hopes even though i didn't ancestral i didn't do anything i never i sided it in twice never drew it not even once and there goes the match Whew. but yeah just a little quick recap i mean i had four red white lands this arid mesa was one of them bolt a braid, oust, some good removal, solitude, palace jailer, hero, blade hold. I even like the big stuff, Inferno Titan, Chandra, Grim Monolith. Name sticker Goblin really delivered. So, yeah, this was a great deck, especially for a three on three. And uh, pulled out a really close two one. We lost a really close draft. Can't ask for much more besides, you know, to actually win. Or to cast Ancestral once every now and then. I didn't, didn't quite get to do that. In any case, that'll do it for today. I appreciate you hanging out as I blaze new trails with Big Boros and... Wow. Some wild games. I hope you enjoyed them. I sure did too. I'll be back tomorrow with another cube draft and I will see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.